Hey guys, welcome back. Dev Spider here. So I wanted to go over a quick series on some tips and tricks for New World for any new players that are going to join us in the main release. I'm currently in the beta right now. I'm level 50. I'll show you my stats really quick. So weapon mastery, great axes mastered, hatchets is coming up, trade skills, everything's mostly at 100 for gathering and stuff, if not maxed out or getting there. Uh, but everything else is getting close to 100. I didn't focus on this mostly just because... Um, I wanted to play the game, check out the maps, do the quests, do a lot of the expeditions, which some people call dungeons. Uh, we did a lot of PvPing, we did some war. I'll have videos on those also on this channel. So be sure to hit that like, subscribe button, and follow if you want notifications for that. We're going to start strong when the full release comes out. We have a core group made already. If you're interested in that, just leave a comment below and I can link you to the Discord if you want to join us. Uh, we're mostly PvP focused, but we do take hardcore PvE players if you want to help with the crafting and stuff to support potions and weapon making. So from there, here you can see your stats. Uh, you can play whatever weapon you want. They all have purposes and uses. Um, attributes, are, like these are just your base stats that you get every time you level up your main level. Alright, so first things first, here's our main map. So as you can see, I've done a lot of exploring, a lot of looking around, we've gotten to a lot of areas. Now this is only a small portion of the map. As you see, there's quest way over here. And that's just areas that aren't unlocked yet or that we need to go into like the depths for and stuff. But there's, as you can see right here, there's more map area that's not open yet. It's going to come out in the main release. So right now it's just a piece of the game. Uh, it's still a big piece. It takes a lot of work, a lot of grinding. These red things or your corruption. So if you own an area, like our company currently owns Everfall, you need to try to keep this corruption down and to do that you want to kill these corruption nodes and then you want to kill the corrupted portals also uh, they will start an invasion if the invasion starts and then they get to your city and they take over enough it will degrade your uh, crafting stations so if we click on here you can see our crafting stations are tier 3 and then we have a tier 5 arcana and then you have refining stations you upgrade these when you take it over by completing board missions so there's a board in every city, that's where you get basic quests. You do those and you'll level up your stations. The governor and the leadership will dictate and decide which ones to upgrade. M owning a city means you need to keep these maxed out or people can declare war on you. And these two bars show the other factions. Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it, like their claim on the area. So currently our fort is being controlled by a different faction, the syndicates, which means they're slowly building up rep in the area. So as their reputation grows, they'll be able to declare war on us when we come open for war. And here's an invasion. You see upcoming invasion. That means the cor corruption's taking over. There's probably, here you see an upcoming war it means that somebody's taken over enough reputation to declare war. If you click on the cities, you can see what you have available in those cities like quests and stuff. If you want to, you can remotely look at your storage and see what you have stored in that city. If you own that in another city, you can actually pull from your storage and stuff between the two cities and so we'll click on that again it'll tell you the levels of the crafting stations the refining stations and the taxes so it'll tell you how much it costs you like this city is pretty good to craft in and sell and trade in each one of these dictates that so crafting fee is low so if you refine materials is low and that costs gold so that's half a gold pretty much to make a synth and then from there like I said again you can see your stations for each thing so if you're trying to focus craft you can find a city that has the tier station that you need and just remember those, like I said those tiers change based on the invasion of the corruption and it'll they'll if the controlling company and pretty much anybody randomly wants to do it if there aren't enough people killing off the corruption it'll get to your city and it'll start downgrading your stations All right from there another good tip to know is if you are looking at a map and you zoom in most maps have multiple uh, from what I found they have two remote points that you can teleport to if you have enough Azoth here's your Azoth that tells you if you can fast travel or not uh, Azoth fast travel is based on several different things of how much it costs it's based on weight like how much stuff you have on you it's also based on whether or not your faction owns the area so like here if I was to fast travel it costs 26 but if I went to say Windsward yeah, it's gonna cost me 111 because my faction does not own that so it's more expensive. All right, now on these maps, like I said, you have remote recall points that you can teleport to and from in case you don't want to have to make the long runs back and forth. And as you can see, I've unlocked a lot of them. There are these little arrows, these double arrows that you see on the map. 
Now to find those, if you can't, if you don't know where they're at, like I can kind of hold my map up for a second if you want to kind of get a rough idea of where some of them are for these starting zones. I haven't found all of them or gone to them, but you can see there's two here, two here. But uh, if, so if you're on a map and you haven't found those yet, you can zoom in on the map. And when you see these symbols, this little block with a little front walk off of it, that is a teleport zone. And sometimes they'll have this hexagon around them. So the closer we get, once we get closer to it, it's going to turn into a question mark. And then you just need to run up and touch it. You can see it from a distance too. It'll have like a blue glow if you're like facing it from the right angle. So see now it's a question mark. It says Uncharted Landmark. And it gives you a picture preview, which you can see that's a teleport. And it's these stone carns right here. So you just run up to it and it will activate. So now we can fast travel to and from here. This is the Shadow Mine Shrine. So if you hit M now, now we have two arrows here. So we can now teleport to and from here. I right, guess another thing to note is you can see your quest. The numbers are not the same for everybody. So if you're in a group, they might not have the same quest number for you. It's based on your journal and how it's pinned. If you have quests you're too low level for or that you can't do solo like elite quest or dungeon quest, you can unpin them. So like see this one's pinned right here, Bones for Bark Medius. That's a dungeon for the Amorine expedition. So if you don't want that showing up, you can unpin it. And then it'll leave room for more quests to show up if you're trying to track like how many kills you need or how much stuff you have to gather for something. And you can repin it. If you don't want to complete it, say it's a repeatable quest or something, you can abandon it here. If you don't know where it's located, you can hit view and map and it will take you to where it's at. And then again, the numbers, if you look at the right side of my screen, that's related to how I picked up the quest and what order they're currently in. So that's a good way to see things guys and again like if you zoom out you can see how much reputation each faction has in each area you can see who controls the forts um, if you want to change the reputation we'll go over that later you'll do that in the cities with your faction you'll go to them and take pvp quests you'll have to flag for pvp to flag for pvp you press u as in uniform and just know if you flag for pvp people can kill you and then you run around complete the pvp quest turn those in you'll get some reputation points for that zone Normally the best way to do that is to pair up with people in your company, get like a large group, if not the whole company together, run as a group, go complete the quest, circle back in, turn them in, and just rinse and repeat until you get the reputation you want, then declare war. If you declare war, if your faction has the most rep, you'll be allowed to be the, or if your company has the most rep, you'll be the company that gets the war, and it costs 25,000 gold. If not, then uh, it'll pretty much go to a lottery and whoever wants to declare war can, can declare war and like I said I'll have some war videos out so y'all can check those out to see how they go about offensive and defensive wars and I'm working on those videos now so they'll be out here shortly if they're not already depending on when you watch this video and uh, like I said as we go through some stuff I'll go over some more basic t uh, quick tips and tricks for starting like how to find hemp how to find iron um, how your compass works at the top because once you get high enough level in harvesting skills mining skills or whatever kind of gathering skill it is you'll be able to track animals um, if it glitches just log out and log back in and the things will show up and you'll see them on your compass at the top of the screen and it'll show you like if there's an iron node nearby certain animals and stuff it's just based on your level of what you can and can't see um, trying to think of anything else that we need to go over with the main map there's not much um, so if you have a house though pick a good city that you want to put your house in you can recall to your house and you can recall to the end the house recall is every three hours the end recall is every one hour so whatever end you're registered at each town has an end so you can register there and then you can recall to it and it doesn't cost you any azoth and then uh, the recall to your house same thing and if you recall to the house you can reset the timer on it for less azoth and teleport to it than what it would cost you to recall to say that just the city or the end so that's another good tip there to save you Azoth. To get Azoth, we can go over that too. Another uh, good way to get that is to kill enemies. Um, if you dungeon dive, you can get these Azoth. What are they called? Vol of Suspended Azoth, and they'll give you Azoth as well. So kill enemies, uh, get vials, open those, they'll give you Azoth. Or if you have the right tools, let me see, I think my gathering tool, yeah, my, har my harvesting tool, if you look at it, the stat on it says Azoth Extraction, 41% chance when you finish gathering a node to gain one azoth so every time i gather plants i have a 41 percent chance to get one azoth so you want to get as many of those as you can if you're a gatherer and that will help you keep your azoth up as you gather and proceed across the map personally i like to gather basic materials while i'm low level like iron hemp and leather 
and I just store that stuff in each town because you have a weight limit on yourself. If you look up here, you can see it 99.8 out of 709 pounds. That weight limit is decided by bags that you can make or buy off the auction house. Those can increase your weight, which is called encumbrance. So like this bag adds 158, this one adds 159, and then this one adds 101. And then certain skills will do the same thing for you. They'll make things lighter and heavier. So if we went to like our character and like say here with your main points, if you look at these little circle nodes, they tell you what adding, like building up to that point and gear adds to that too. So if you, you can lose and gain that based on changing your gear out. So keep an eye on that. And each one of these gives you something special. Like this one's 5% damage to melee light attacks, plus 10% mining speed. The next one, 20 encumbrance, 10% melee weapon for heavy attacks, minus 10% decrease in weight of mined items so your ore is 10% lighter and each one like I said it does that so something different for everything so this one's like for dexterity's crit chance scanning speed and eventually it will give you like scanning items or lighter so you, you wanna if you're gonna Minecraft, you might wanna base your weapon and what you're using off of that so you can carry more and then like I said on the cities if you click on those you can see your storage here and your storage each storage is, has a weight limit also if you look at your items, like see here it says cooking, it'll tell you that you have 37.7 pounds of cooking items. Same thing with everything else, refining agents, we've got 43.3 pounds of that, we've got 52 pounds in potions, and you know, that's how that, how that works. So you want to watch your weight, You want and then for the to increase the storage weight in cities on these, you just need to complete quests, you'll get territory standing, and you can level up your territory standings that when they level you'll be able to put points into it and then you can decide to do like to lessen your property tax to increase gathering speed to increase the storage weight uh, to increase the amount of gain you get per completing quest and killing certain enemy types uh, you have to hit level 10 I believe in each city if you want to buy a house in that city and then certain houses also require you to be anywhere from like level 20 or level 30 to buy the bigger houses and then you want to buy houses, you want to put furniture and stuff in there, like trophies and everything. That'll increase your, that'll give you specialty stats if you have the right furnishings and decorations. And then you can also add more storage in your house by building furnishing chests that allow you to store items in your house. So like I said, I personally would pick like a central city like Everfall or Windsward. And that's where I would do all my crafting, build my house, build my storages. And I would just try to run most of my stuff out of there. I also think it's a good idea too, once you get enough money and standing in cities to build in more, to buy a house in more than just one city. And then focus craft and take your items to those cities based on what you have. So like have like Windsward for cooking, Everfall for like your metal working and leather working and stuff if you're doing weapons. Pick another city and do Arcana, but keep them close to each other because you're going to eventually need to share items between them to craft certain things. If you want to dungeon dive, you need to make sure you're leveling your stone crafting because you're going to need these tuning orbs. Now each area, each city, if you accept a quest in those and work through their quest lines, eventually they're going to give you like f free tuning orbs to get started with. But every time you open a dungeon for your party, you're going to it'll use up one of your tuning orbs. If they open it, it'll use their tuning orb, and then you can use yours next. Uh, that's, most people who've run those expeditions, that's how they want to do it. They want every member to have a tuning orb. And like I said, so I have two depth tuning orbs, which you get those in Restless Shore. That's a level 45 expedition. So what I did is I ran the rest of shore. I did all the quests over and over again that it kept giving me, like the yellow ones. So if we look at like a city, like this city right here, it has two available quests. So if you zoom in on it, these are what I call city quests. You do have the board. You don't. I mean, you can do the board quest. It helps level. That's a good way to power level. It's just re rinse and repeat on the board quests because it's like simple things like gather leather, craft basic items. Um, but if you complete these quests that pop up from the NPCs, eventually one of them is going to assign you to go and run the depths and do stuff for them and then they'll give you a free tuning orb or two to go do that so if that worked for Amarin it works for which Amarin if anybody wants to know where that's located is right here and um, once you get the right leveling and you clear that the next available expedition is right here it's going to be the Shattered Oblisk it looks like so we'll zoom in and this is the portal the Starstone Barrows you'll have to make a specific tuning orb per dungeon so for like the depths, it's going to be called the depth tuning orb. For Amarin, it's the Amarin tuning orb. This is level 25. This is level 45. Make sure you're at least at level 45 with decent gear to run that. And you're going to want a full party because this one's pretty rough. I've got a video that's coming out for that one. 
And that's uh, just some quick tips and tricks, guys. Um, make sure you have potions and food if you're running around soloing so you can get your mana and health up while you're fighting in case you're taking a bunch of damage so you don't have to stop to heal constantly. Uh, don't worry too much about your gear and selling it until you start getting like tier 4 blues. Those can sell pretty good on Auction House. Most of your tier 3 and below stuff won't sell, so you can just salvage that. If you hover over items, it'll give you the option of what to do so you can like shift click to move it and discard it you can alt click to link it to chat uh, you can alt s click it to salvage it which gives you like half a coin and repair points if you look at the bottom of your inventory screen this is your gold it's capped at 500,000 this is your repair parts you get that for scrapping weapons and armor and then this is your azoth which caps at a thousand Azoth can be used for a lot of different or a lot of different things. Mostly you want to use it for teleporting around so you can get to your groups faster, get your quest done quicker. You can also use that to boost your crafting. So always keep your Azoth up. That's why I said you want to get your tools, your gathering stuff up to where it gets Azoth for you so you don't have to worry about running out because it, it it is expensive. Like you saw some of the teleports 100 plus Azoth per city to move to and I don't have much of anything on me compared to what I normally carry. Alright guys, so I'm currently questing. I'm going to keep questing until I get these coins. Uh, these are just some quick tips and tricks to help you out. I, the compass, my compass is currently glitching it looks like, so it's not showing me anything. But uh, I would like to show you all some ore. Like this is silver ore right here. So you can just press E if you have the mining pickaxe and you can mine that. To know if you have the tools or not, if you're trying to mine, you just come down here. These are going to be your tools. So. You, like I said, you're going to need a sickle, skinning knife, pickaxe, your Azoth staff, which that's a quest line to get those. I'm currently on the tier 3 one. Then you'll need a logging axe with trees, and you'll need a fishing pole to fish. Fishing is good to do too, if anybody's curious. Fishing allows you to make a lot of money. If you do a lot of fishing, you can get fish oil, which is used in cooking, and a lot of city board quests. You can get fish fillets, which again, that's a lot of city board quests. Want a lot of fish fillets, like, like anywhere from 10 to 30 per quest. And you can speed level that if you have enough, like, because each one will give you anywhere from 1,000 to like 3,000 experience if you complete them. Some of them will give you less, like 500 if it's like kill like five rabbits. But like I said, you just walk outside the city gates, you can grab some iron, grab some trees, grab some rabbits, grab some turkeys, and grab some leather and some other basic stuff and quickly complete it. And I guess real quick while we're here too, we can go over this. So if you look at my screen right below my character, you'll see where it says corruption resistance. That means we're currently standing in a corrupted zone which is like this black goo on the ground and these red pillars and that same thing happens when you stand on these corrupted sites and once that reaches uh, zero you'll take damage so you see I've taken damage just from standing here it'll rebuild over time if you step out of the corrupted zone so if we come over here we should be out of the corruption zone and it should start building up slowly again you can make potions to increase that resistance so that you don't take damage like I said, you can eat some food if you want. It'll help offset it because you'll start recovering health. And those are going to be hotkeys on the bottom. You see like three, four, five, six. I've got food and health potions set there. The very bottom of the screen, it'll show your level and your current experience setting. The top right shows your quest. The very tip top is your compass, and you can set markers on the map by right-clicking. So if we look here, that's a marker I have placed right there. So if we wanted to move it, you can uh, right-click on it to make it go away. You can right click on the map to put it wherever you want to. And that just gives you a quick reference on your compass if you want to see where to go. Your party members can also see that in case you're running around doing corruption and you want to tag which one you're going to next. And I believe that's mostly what we want to go over to. If you want to know about PvP, the good things about being flagged for PvP, like I said, you need to be in the city, press the U key as in uniform, and that gives you a 5% XP bonus for anything you're completing. You can also get points uh, for killing people. It's a good way to, to level up. It's also a good way to get your weapon mastery up. So guys, that's just some quick down and dirty quick uh, tips and tricks on how the game works. Uh, fishing, you'll have to be near a water source. Press F3. You can pull out your fishing rod and fish. Press R while fishing to change your baits out. So if you look into our inventory, you can see we have different baits. They give different boosts. Your fishing rods, if you craft and buy them, they can give you different things. Like mine gives you daytime colossus, medium boost to chance of catching larger fish during daytime. Um, if it's got a red X on it, it means it's broken. So you can just hold the R key and left click, and you can repair it for six coins and five repair parts. You can repair any and all your gear remotely wherever you're at. All you have to do is have repair parts and gold. 
And like I said, guys, that should be enough to get you started. And those are just some quick tips and tricks on how the game works. Hope this helps you all out. As always, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and follow button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Another note on the quick tips and tricks for the video, we're going to need to make sure that we go over when you see these blue notes floating around. So if we backed up, they, they're usually glowing blue. Sometimes they're hard to see or they're buried under something. You want to read these. So just walk up to them, press E, and then hit Escape. And if you haven't read it yet, if you look at the bottom, it'll give you experience. It's like 200 experience per note. So that's a good way to level up. You'll find these in cities and pretty much anywhere that's like a named location. You'll find them on the side of the road, just in all kinds of random places. And you can track them in your journal. Uh, somewhat and see the notes on them and it's just a quick way to get some experience to get some achievements and stuff for finding so many of them pretty much doing anything and everything in the game does that you can also find chests inside of these cities or cities but our name locations also I think I've already grabbed all the ones here let's take a look and see if we see one really quick so I know there was one right here so you see this is a supply stockpile so if you press E, you can gather from these. And there's all kinds of these. There's all kinds of elite chests and provisions chests that give food and different items. And like right there, we just got plus 11 tannin. Those items you want to save, those are regents for crafting. So refining regents, you want to save all those that you get if you plan to craft. If you don't plan to craft, you can sell these and make some decent money on the auction house. Even this, uh, the basic sand flux, you can find that from day one. That sells really well. The tannin sells really well because that's used for le tannins for leather crafting. And your sand flux is used for making like steel and more advanced metals. And for weapons crafters like us, you need a lot of that. Like with thousands of that. So it sells really, really quick on the market. You can get solvents. You can get all kinds of different regions. So make sure you're always collecting those and saving those. If you need salt and stuff, you find those in crates. You get different things from different areas. So like here in Everfall, like collected from provisions boxes, that's where I've been finding salt. Which I couldn't find for the longest time in the game. Um, other things is you'll just have to gather the purple little bushes you see. That'll give you more cooking items and regions if you're trying to get your cooking up.